world he desires to have a life a healthy life a life with good health there is no human being present who will dislike having a life with good health there will be no human being who won't want vitality and all round comprehensive good health and life uh, free from sickness and disease this desire a person doesn't just keep this desire or hold this desire rather all people to a, an extent implement and and fulfill this desire to maintain good health um, if we see around us in the world there are resources many many resources for good health hospitals doctors surgeons hakims homeopathic doctors, allopathic doctors, and all of this activity is related to one objective, that human beings can live a healthy life. And to adopt a healthy life, a person's always worried about one element, specific element, that I would like to, uh, I don't want to eat something that can uh, spoil my health. Because health is all related to food. If you um, drink something too cold, uh, you do that because you don't want a uh, flu. And other types of foodstuffs, if you are cautious and preventative, then you don't, for the reason that you don't get a flu or a cold or a headache or distress. So you've got the choice in the everyday life that when you sit to eat, Maybe you'll get invited to a feast. You'll think, should I eat this food? Shall I not eat this food? Does this suit my diet and issues or not? Isn't it? Because in the background, the thought is, I don't want to be unwell. I don't want to get sick. If I'm sick, then I'll stop enjoying life. And then there's another fear. Oh, if I get sick too much, then I might die quicker. I'll pass away, leave this world. So this is uh, a constant thought and maybe you could say the most important part of our life to maintain good health medicines are there and um, remedies are present always we're thinking I need to save myself I need to maintain good health I need to prevent sickness and when everything we've done to prevent sickness and when a person his body goes quiet then what do we do then we sit down and cry Oh, he's died, he's died, he's gone. Have you ever seen anyone laughing when the person dies? People cry. They're upset, said, oh, oh, the poor soul, he's died, he's died. He's passed away, but we've got to die. People cry when somebody dies. And uh, Wali Allah, the pious people, they see these things, they read the Quran, they read the Hadith, they see this. So one Wali, he was surprised on a point. He said, I'm surprised that the dunya is a weird place. Weird people, he said. He said that when a person's life passes away, everyone sits down and cries and sobs. That when the physical body stops moving, when the physical body stops, everyone cries. But it's surprising to see that when a person's heart is dead, nobody cries for him. Nobody. What a massive statement. So many people are walking around in this generation, their hearts are dead. Nobody sees them and cries, rather they praise, Oh yeah, he's good, don't ask about him, he's reached the heights, he's a big shot. Isn't this the case? People say this, don't they? It's a surprise, it's shocking that a person's died physically, he's passed away, okay he's gone. But if the heart is dead and not alive, 
if people's hearts are dead, nobody cries, nobody regrets he's walking around deceased. Deceased. The Quran has said this. The Quran. Allah said in his Allah says that I want the Qalbin Salim. I want the pure hearts. Those whose hearts are pure and alive, they will take that pure and alive heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine. Those whose hearts are alive, yeah, the physical body may may stop, but the heart doesn't stop. It's alive. Allah has given a logic here. Your body is dead, you're deceased. What's happened? So what? We worried about so much about body, vitamin supplements, proteins, go to this cure, see this doctor. And two people sit down, what do you eat nowadays? What's your diet? No, don't take this medicine, take that medicine. No, 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 I went to that doctor and he prescribed me this medication, blood pressure, I'm doing that nowadays, I'm suppressing it, I'm reducing it. It's in this case, everyone's topic, talking, because mouth when it's nazdeek, close, old people, they want to lengthen their life, but how can you reduce your life? Doesn't matter how much you talk, subhanallah. But the person, those whose hearts are alive and they sit together, they talk about real life, the eternal life, the daimi life, the permanent life. Because when a person dies physically, that's when his permanent life starts. This is all we need to understand, my brothers. If we understand this, then Allah Ta'ala calls that person a man of great wisdom, great aql. If somebody understands this point that the body will die and stop, the body does stop. And okay, I'm maintaining it, good health. After a few hours, the spiders will come, they'll devour the flesh. It's just flesh, isn't it? Meat. They'll devour the skin, the flesh, and your forefoot down below the earth, and your body will disappear. But if you die with a, a, a heart that's alive, Allah says, then you will live the life forever in the grave. You'll be given good health, you'll be strong, powerful, you'll have vitality, you'll have energy. Do you understand what I'm saying, brothers, or not? Will you do amal on this, inshallah? So who will you, will you worry about from today? What will you worry about from today? Haji sir? Will you worry about your body from today or your heart? The heart. My brothers, let's understand, I'm with you. I'm alongside with you. Why are we living fake lives? Why do we cry over this body? What's the benefit? Okay, it's fine. I'm not saying that we shouldn't look after the body. Keep on looking after your body. Eat vitamins, eat good food, strong food, drink milk, make your body strong. No doubt. I'm not saying don't look after the body. This is Allah's hukum. Allah's order and their benefits. We must uphold the right of the body. I'm not saying leave eating, drinking, don't look after the body. No. Do it. Allah's given you a body, power, energy. Allah's prepared. Have goats and sheep and chickens and eat this bird and have this food and partridge and quail and, and batares. It's halal. Halal means eat. Consume. Kulu ashrabu. Eat, drink, enjoy. But how long will this carry on for? It's not the objective of life. Don't make it your objective of life to enjoy life. Allah says you eat and drink so you're energetic. So you can do ibadah. So you can worship. If your body is ill, you can't do ibadah, can you? Doesn't matter what you say or do, you can't do anything. Yes, you try a person like me. What can a person do? What can a person do? He feels like in his heart he wants to practice. But what can a man do when his body gives up physically? Yeah, if an illness comes, sickness comes, he can't get up, he can't sit up. So there's no doubt a person needs to look after his body physically. But this is temporary. This is temporary life. It's for the temporary life. We need to think permanent. Forever. Unlimited. Permanent house. Permanent life. Permanent happiness. So for that, what do we need? What strength do we need? What is the element we need to worry about more? The health of the heart. The health. Will you do this brothers? Yes. So now, how do we look after the health of the heart? How? Look. Body and ruh, soul. Allah has given us two factors, two parts to life. Heart is related to the ruh, the soul, the spirit. And the body, what's the body made of? Mitti, clay, dust. So everything related to the body has been made of clay. Yes? That we see all these things. For example, we have uh, dates, and uh, mangoes, other fruits. Where do these things come from? From the soil, from the earth. And it gives us food, physical we eat food, and dates and fruits and mangoes. So whatever comes out from the earth, the clay, the body will consume. The body, because we need it. So the enjoyment of the mango is very nice compared to other fruits. 
which is related to the body. So Allah Ta'ala has prepared the food to come out from the soil, the clay, the earth, to feed the body that's being made out of the clay. So what's the, the food for the heart? Heart is related to ruh, the soul. Allah Ta'ala said that I have blown life into your ruh, into your spirit. Yes, I've made it alive. So both things are alive. Now, we know for the physical body, we eat fruits and vegetables. So where will the heart get food from? Say it loudly. From the heavens. Because it's angelic, it's spiritual. You can't feed your heart with fruits and vegetables. But you say Allah once, the heart is alive. The heart is alive. So where's that food come from? The nutrition for the heart? From the heavens, from the skies. Difference? That there's no difference made to the stomach. If you say Allah, you will still be hungry. If you say Allah hundreds of times, it doesn't make a difference to the stomach. It needs food, fruits, vegetables from the earth. If you do dhikr, do dhikr, you're still hungry. Isn't it? The Prophet ﷺ, the Sahaba Karam, they were hungry. They were hungry because the earth desires the earth. The body that's made out of the earth, the clay, the dust desires food from the earth. In the same way, the ruh, your spirit, your soul, your heart, it's desperate for spiritual sustenance. So when Allah Ta'ala has given us food that comes out of the earth, physically from the soil, so has Allah Ta'ala not prepared food for the heart, for the spirit? Subhanallah. Allah, has He not made beautiful, delicious foods for our ruh, for our heart? Definitely He has. Definitely such food, such nourishment, that the heart, it floats in the air, high up to the heavens, because it's grabbed hold of strength and energy. The body could be weak and frail, but if your heart is strong, mazboot, then you float in the air. That's how much energy you have, that energy power comes to your hands, to your body. The Sahaba Akram, radiallahu anhum, that for months they were hungry, months. They had so few things to eat. But subhanallah, for example, they had so much power spiritually that if they had a confrontation, even if they slapped somebody, that person would go flying. Because they were spiritually strong. Iman was strong. Subhanallah. So for the heart, we need the same rules apply. That for the heart, it's got the same needs, the same requirements. If you give the wrong food to the heart, you'll become ill. So we want good food for the heart. And what's good food for the heart? So our body spiritually can be strong. If you have good food, physically your body is strong. So heart has two forms of food. If you give it dirty food, impure food, uh, not nutritious food, then the heart becomes ill, diseased. Just like the body has a disease, the heart can have disease. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ marada. Allah says in the Quran, not one mard, marada. Allah says many diseases are inherent in the heart, just like the body. Has diseases. Can anyone say how many diseases there are in the world today? Physical illnesses, sicknesses. Doctor says, Oh, what's happened to him? What's happened to his stomach? Uh, he doesn't understand. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of illnesses that come out from the body. Same way the heart has hundreds and thousands of uh, diseases. Nifaq, hypocrisy, lying. These are diseases of the heart. Not having tawakkal in Allah. Not trusting Allah. Doubting. Not having trust in Allah. Not being uh, content with what Allah has given. What is all of this? What is if your heart is not diseased, then you wouldn't have these illnesses. That you'll be so happy on Allah's decision. Subhanallah, when Allah gives decisions, one is your decision, one is Allah's decision. When you make your decisions, you're happy. When the heart is sick, then oh, I'm finished, I'm finished. But when the heart is strong, spiritually strong, energetic, he's taking good spiritual foods. When Allah decides, the heart is happy. Subhanallah, Allah, you've guided me, I'm happy with what you've told me. Oh, I will leave this now. This I will not touch this unlawful thing. I won't even put my hands near it. This doesn't suit me. It's not compatible for me. But those whose hearts are dead, they cry. No, 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 I need this. I wanted that. I was in hardship. What can I do if I don't get this? I'll be finished in the dunya. I won't progress. They cry. They cry. Yeah? Uh, the friend of Allah, if you've heard someone for so long, no, 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 this is not for now. I don't like your decision. Uh, maybe what you're saying is right, but it doesn't suit me. I have a, what can I do then in the dunya? How will I live? Nobody will ask me twice. We complain. And those who have the, the understanding, their hearts are strong, when Allah's decision comes, subhanallah, amanna wa sadaqna, alhamdulillah, I'm grateful to you. This is not loss. It may look physically as a loss, but it's benefit for me, Allah, accept. So the heart has so many sicknesses, diseases, illnesses. We know ourselves what our problems are. We know. We are patients, sick. We don't realize someone says a jinn has come, or nazar has come, the evil eye, or the sorcerer. Let's go to the exorcist. No brothers, we don't need to do any of this. There's no nazar, your hearts are diseased. There's no magic spell and etc. But the heart says, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. 
I'm totally strong. I do this and that. I'm totally fine. I don't need to have the solution. Okay, that's fine. Sometimes it occurs a person is healthy. That, for example, you're giving your body good food, and you say, I eat good food. I eat mangoes, and I have meat, and I eat vitamins, and I'm strong. But he doesn't know he's a weakling. He's a weakling. Why? Because if you're eating good food, but if alongside that you're having bad food, then that is spoiling your body. On the one hand, you're eating good food. On the other side, you are cancelling the good food. Same way you're praying salah, worship, amal, dhikr. You're doing everything. You say, I do dhikr as well. I pray and I've got no sickness. But but what we need to see is alongside and parallel with ibadat, that you are also giving bad, bad food to your heart. You're eating that as well. You're praying salah, but you're lying. You're doing hajj, but you're taking interest. So the Quran, you're reciting tilawah. You're giving ruh, the, the soul, but you're making it ill at the same time. Yes, that you're also eating foods that give a, a flu to the heart. You're backbiting, lying, consuming haram, delaying salah, leaving salah, leaving worship actions. So how will you become healthy? How will your heart become healthy? No, the principle, go to any doctor. What does the doctor say? Before I give you the cure, it's better to prevent the sickness. It's better to prevent the sickness rather than run to the medicine after having the sickness. So first things we need to make the heart healthy. To make the heart healthy, we need to prevent any bad food spiritually reaching to the heart. Ibadah put it to one side, has no link with the heart. That's no bad nutrients, vitamins, Food should reach to the heart. Just like you've drank cold water, the sneezing starts. Happens, isn't it? If you don't take caution, if you don't exercise caution, if you've eaten something very hot, you start sweating beads on the forehead, isn't it? The effect is there. Same way, if you've done a wrong action, a non-sharia action, you committed a sin, so-called minor sin, then obviously take a small amount of poison. Small amount of poison. You put a little bit on the tip of your tongue. Will you die or not? Same way, the same principle applies. Lying, backbiting, these are big sins. And they'll develop darkness. You know, lying, we lie so much. One lie upon the other. One lie upon the other. That's further. No, 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 he's not here. He's not here. The man's there. He's present. No, 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 he hasn't come back here. I'm waiting for him. But the man's there. He's present. Our business associates, mashallah, they said that this is how we succeed in business. Oh, come tomorrow. I'll give you the money tomorrow. And he knows he's not going to give the money the next day. So tell me what a sick person he will be. What will be his hal, the condition of his heart. And when he dies, then his body. Because he affected so much, so much dirty, impure food he fed to his heart. So dirty and unlawful, impure. His body maybe has passed away, but inside he is annihilated. Annihilated. So three types of hearts. The Quran tells us this. Sick heart. Sick heart. Diseased heart. That's number one. What are the diseased hearts? They do hajj and they lie. They do dhikr. And they're doing wrong actions. They do sins. non shari actions. The, even if it's a so-called minor non shari action, you're walking, you hear a song. You hear the drums beating. You sit at a place or you pass by a place where haram is taking place. Then, then your salah is a waste if you're, if you're taking part. So when both things mix up, that's called a sick heart, disease heart. So when you turn analyze the same way, don't decide yourself, no, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. People say, no, no I'm fine. I'm totally fine. I'm tiktok. I'm okay. What's the basis? I've done so much dhikr. I've worshipped Allah. But think about the sins. Morning till evening, how many sins have you committed? That living or stopping at a place where sins take place, then that will make you a sinful person as well. Yes? If you sit next to the fire, you won't maybe burn, but it will heat you up, won't it? It will warm you up. Then, then, that the embers of fire, the embers of fire is Jahannam fire. Jahannam fire, what's it? The embers, the ashes of the fire of Jahannam. Run away so fast from these places of sin. So fast them out. You can fast. Run, run and save yourself. Because the effects will come to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Am I wrong or am I right what I'm saying? So how much do we prevent? We're proud. No, no, I'm doing this and that. This is a waste. I'm giving you an example of health. Doesn't matter how many tablets you eat. Antibiotics are prescribed to you by the doctor. High dosage. High milligrams. And then you go, on top of taking medicine, 
And he says that decrease the sugar, don't eat sugary foods and take insulin. And then when you're taking insulin, at the same time you eat three mangoes. Oh, it's all right, I've taken the insulin injection. But then the diabetes will rock it up to the highest level. Because you don't know that you've just eaten mangoes which has sugar inside it. So you may have prayed salah, you may have recited Quran, tilawat of Quran, you may have done dhikr, so many beads you've tapped. But what action have you just done now? Where are you sat? Where, where, where do you spend the morning? Or where are you sat in the evening? Who is your friend? Who is your relative? Who is your friendship with? Who are your links with, your connections with? Who do you hang around with? It might sound weird, but very straightforward. Allah Ta'ala explains, I can recite the Quranic verses on this direct, then you'll understand. This is just Quranic verses I'm, I'm explaining, summarizing. They're direct verses of the Quran. So Allah says, what is the heart that of us that's become what? It's ill. So what do you call this hadith? Sick heart. We say it's not sick. This is the sick heart when both things contaminated mix. After that comes what level? After the sick heart becomes what? The, the, the dead heart person dies. After sickness comes a passing away. Dying. So a person who's sick, then he passes away. So the end point of the sick heart is the dead heart, the deceased heart. Shh. All the airs come up. Summum fahum la yarji'oon. Can't see, can't hear, just like the dead person. So he's the heart which is dead. Allah says they're walking around, they're not alive. Their hearts are deceased. What's the sign? He doesn't know anything. No taste of the deen in his life. He is a foolish person. Haram, daughter's doing something, father's doing something, uncle's doing something, mum who's doing something, friends are doing something, doesn't care at all. Ah, oh, it's alright. Enjoy life. What does the Quran term that person? Say loudly. What does the Quran term that person? Deceased heart. Even if he's walking around alive, physically, but the heart is beyond dead. It's died long time ago. Now, the third condition, just like the body is sick body, then number two body is the dead body, the person who's passed away. And third is the healthy, nourished body, physically energetic. Same way we have the sick heart, disease heart, we have the heart that's dead. And the third is the qalbi salim, the best and the powerful and energetic heart. The Quran is given that name. Qalbi, qalbi salim. What is that heart? That it is the Qalbin Salim which Allah wants. What's the strength of the heart? Allah says the strength of the Qalbin Salim is Alhamdulillah. He won't be the, the human being who comes to me. Allah says it will be his heart. His amal will be linked to his heart. And the, the, for example, I'll say, show me his heart. The purity of his heart. His heart will attest and testify to his deeds. Angels say, Allah hears his heart. Allah says, Jannah, take him to Jannah, paradise. What's that? What's inherent in a, a clean, pure heart? Khalis, sincere humble, first class, healthy, no sickness to the heart. When it came, the sickness, it stopped it there. It applied the tablet and it, and it, and it cancelled the sickness. Allah's prepared for that. So the person asks, that your heart is so clean and strong. How did you do that? He said, I used to consume good food. Say, subhanallah. What foods? Very nice foods I had for my heart. I used to feed it good, strong. وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Subhanallah. That... I gave such foods, I selected such food, nutrients for my heart. I sifted through the Qur'an. Allah, what foods do you like to feed the heart? Just like medicine, the research under the microscopes. Nowadays, these are the best vitamins. Eggs do this. Proteins come from this. So, where will we get the good food for the heart? From where? From the Qur'an, from the Hadith. Allah Ta'ala said... The Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated that all the world universe is the best food for the heart for me to consume. The greatest word, say subhanAllah, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the greatest malfuzad, the greatest spiritual nourishment, better than the whole world of what it can say. Ya Rasul, what is that? Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallahu, wallahu akbar. Subhanallah. Amazing. Amazing. Tell me, how much do we eat this every day? How much of this food do we feed on? Allah, Allah says, وَذْكُرْ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ Remember me. Every day, morning and evening, Allah is prescribing to us. Allah says, I'll prescribe you beautiful spiritual food. Recite my name. Mention my name. Repeat my name. And see your whole body, your heart, your ruh, your soul will be refreshed and energetic. You can't get better food than this. Yeah? Allah says, put everything to the side. This is the best food. The best vitamin. The best energy. Yes? Supplements. So in life we need to do two actions. We need to shun the wrong foods. We need to take the wrong foods out of our heart. We need to save ourselves. 
that this is wrong. And when we feed the, the, the wrong food to the heart, consider we will become sick. 100%, no doubt. Even the foolish person won't think this. The Allah, I've injected the wrong into my heart. Okay? And the second thing we need to consider is that we need to give good food to the heart. What's the good food? The best food? What is it? Look, the body of a human being, when he gets hungry, we get hungry, don't we, physically? At what time? Morning? Don't you get hungry in the morning? Straight away you go to the kitchen. Milk, breakfast. Soon as the evening comes, where do we go? To the food mat. We eat food. Yes? So Allah has also prepared the same for the ruh, the soul. Same times. Bukra, taun, wa asila. Feed your ruh in the morning and the evening, Allah says. Morning and evening. Just like we food. Do you feed your ruh in the morning and evening? No. So that's the problem. That's why we have the majlis. Yes? That we give food to, ru- to the ruh. 30, 45 minutes, we sit down, do marakaba, and someone snoring, snoring, sitting. But you are eating because you're in the majlis. You may be feeling sleepy, tired, but the noor is going into your heart. Strengthen it. Tell me how many people in the morning do they sit and do the breakfast with the dhikr of Allah and feed the ruh and the heart. Is anyone like this? How many people do this? Yeah, Everyone's died. They're deceased. Okay, one day, two days. If all life long they don't feed their heart, all life long they've never done dhikr. And then they say, no, I don't know why I've got problems in life, I've got issues, I don't know what to do, where shall I turn to, who shall I go to? So inshallah, brothers, it's a logical topic we discussed today. It's not complicated, is it, to understand what I'm saying, is it? Yeah, People have got understanding, they can make their lives. Let's make our li- hearts alive. We're sat down with hearts that are dead. We don't have taste buds. We've lost the taste buds. Our heart has lost its taste buds. On small points, we start crying. We get scared. We leave tawakal Allah. We don't trust Allah. We get afraid. We say bad to X, Y, Z. We say life's bad. That man's bad. My destiny's bad. We should not say bad to ourselves. Yeah, for no reason, because we don't consider our heart is in a bad position. Such impure, dirty, expired food we feed to the heart. Such dirty food. Some people constantly on their tongues, they swear, Oh, you this, oh, you go there, oh, you this and that. I can't understand. How can they taste the goodness in their hearts? Their lives are black. Black. Such swears come from the tongue all day long. They don't know. Is there someone older than me sitting here? Younger child? Tuck, 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 tuck. No respect. No one. Yo, you are this and that. Oh, be gone with you. Oh, they curse people. Never. When a person whose heart is dead, that in the world, when you come across someone like that, person who has so much loss, an inch in the world, a loss, see him trembling and shaking. He'll swear everyone's mother and sister. Someone makes a mistake. Let's take an example. I'm talking about people, worldly people. I've seen in myself people like this, who are abusive. I used to tremble. People, they come to work, somebody's got no visa, he's an asylum seeker. They're forced to work somewhere with low wage. And the boss knows that he is uh, majboor, because he hasn't got the right papers. And when I used to run my business, I used to see these employers, bosses taking advantage of those poor souls. He used to swear him so badly, abuse his employees so badly that I started to cry. I knew that where can he go? He's not going to leave the job because he hasn't got the papers. So he, what did he do? He just put the clothes in the wrong place. He put the stock in the wrong place. And today, when I see that person, he's totally finished. The boss, he's got no name. Allah Ta'ala wipes away a person like that. Wipes away whose haughty pride, no respect. If you become this tomorrow, asylum seeker, and he becomes your boss and swears at you like this, how will you feel, tell me? How will you feel? Life has ups and downs, brothers. Sometimes you'll be up, somebody will be down, you'll be down, somebody will be up. Fear Allah. Because the hearts are dead. We have no fear. We dishonor other people. We degrade them. We rub their names under the feet. Reason? Because the heart is dead. It is black. We have no hope for Allah. That's why we stood there big head telling people off. Yes, that... For example, we can't even uh, persevere for a few seconds if someone gives you pain in the world. Have some patience. Forgive him. So these are signs that we are dead. Our hearts are dead. Ummah is dead. Look at the generation today. What's happening around us? We don't go towards the real cure. No, no, the reason is his politics. He's this. He didn't do that. That country. He's got his eye on us. No one can do nothing to anyone with who Allah is. With whom Allah is. Allah says, Ah, subhanallah, that if you create a link with me, connection, Allah says in the Quran, you've read the Quran, haven't you? Wa ma kum, aina ma kuntum, Allah says, that you should have a connection with me so strong, mazboot, that always I'm with you, always I'm with you. Don't doubt this, Allah says. Why do you leave me? 
Why do you forget me? Always I'm with you. Maintain this connection with me. You will go very long way. A very long way. But we'll give dirty food to the heart. Then where will this yaqeen come on these points of the Quran? When we give dirty food? Anyway, let's continue. Let's do dhikr. Let's feed the heart with good food. And after giving good food to the heart, don't give it wrong food after that. Okay? Okay, what do we do? We give good food. Then as soon as we go out, we start doing wrong actions. We feed it in a wrong way. As soon as we don't even sit in the car, we start sinning. Be cautious. Will we do this, brothers? Will we be cautious? Do be careful. Don't give the wrong food to the soul, to the heart. Feed it good food, good actions. And then you'll see, inshallah, not even a week will pass if you do amal like this. Don't give it bad foods. Give it good foods. Inshallah, within a week, you will see yourself improving as a person. Crying, trembling, scared, all of this will go out of the window with Allah's fadl. Everything that Allah wills will occur in life. Why do you want to change Allah's decisions? Can you change Allah's decisions? Can you? Complain and cry and abuse? No. Allah said in the Quran that if something's wrong, if you've got difficulties, worries, issues, it's due to your own actions. Why would it give you hardship? We say, no, I haven't done anything wrong to earn the hardship. It's not my fault. We say, we complain. May Allah Ta'ala give us all the capability, ability that we give a good tonic and formula and potions uh, and whatever food to our hearts and souls. May Allah Ta'ala accept. Ameen.
Yadavyon bolayot ito bolayot na jo jo biyulumro ishko muradino Allahumma ofino bi badni Allahumma ofino bi sami Allahumma ofino bi basri la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minas zalimin Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zurriyatina Urata ayyun wa jayallahu nal muttaqina imama Allahumma rambil humma kama rambayani sagira Allahumma khillana wa lewalidayana wa ustazayana wa mashayikhina wa jamiyyul mu'minina wa al-mu'minat wa al-muslimina wa al-muslimina Allah ya umin wa al-lawwad Bilahmati ka ya rahmu rahimi Subhana rambi ka rambi nirzati ya ma yasifun Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen Walhamdulillahi rambi lalami Amin